It's not five o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to Five. Entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis, two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. Welcome to episode 186. I'm your co-host Steph in Fort Collins and Skyping with me in Colorado Springs is Val. And our special guest is calling in from Los Angeles today. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. We're going to get to that voice in a minute because for those of you that don't know who the Psalm Journal's managing editor is or the senior wine editor at both the Tasting Panel and the Clever Root Publications. This is Jesse Bursbach, a.k.a. Jabs. Welcome, Jabs. Welcome to the podcast, Jabs. An oh. honor to be here, ladies. Yes. And welcome Ripley and Coyote, who are sitting at her feet. <laughs> I think Ripley just passed gas just now, so that's a, that's a thank you for having me. Excellent. <laughs> gifts. Yeah, yes. thank you, gifts. Yes, dog <laughs> farts. First time on the show. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Well, before we get into the interview, I'd like to share a proper introduction of Jabs. She is a certified sommelier through the Court of Master Sommeliers with a background in fine dining, creative marketing, and comedy. An avid beer enthusiast, Jabs is an active home brewer and belongs to the Pacific Gravity Homebrew Club. Her most recent enterprise involves pairing cannabis with wine and beer. Although she is from the island of Kauai, spending the first six years of her life on the islands, Jabs grew up in San Diego, where she received her Bachelor of Science in Marketing from San Diego State University. She currently resides there in Los Angeles with her wife and son, and she is here with us and her two pups. (laughs) <laughs> Yay, Ripley and Coyote. And before we get into the wine questions, can we talk about that comedy thing or anything else that you want our listeners to know about you? I moved to LA, uh, gosh, 14 years ago to to write comedy. And of course, you you know, you also get into the uh, the restaurant scene when you're when you're doing that kind of thing and ended up ascending my way through the fine dining scene in Beverly Hills and and then started contributing here to the magazine and and now I'm here today I've been writing for a living for three years now and off the floor for for that long and but uh, I miss it I miss working in restaurants to be honest but uh we're talking about comedy (laughs) oh I know that's okay (laughs) going that way uh, no, I I love comedy. I still uh, write. I performed at UCB, um, iOS. Actually, it's not there anymore in, in Hollywood, but um, I was on a sketch team called Worm, Mr. Worm. Wrote lots of fun bits and sketches and stuff and goes go to as much comedy as I can these days, although with a kid and a full-time job and all the wine stuff and now beer stuff, I'm busy. But I laugh in between and I try and write as much comedy into into uh, writing about wine as I can. And a lot of times it gets, you know, edited out. But I sneak as much in as I can. So. Oh, yeah. Who's your editor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny because you've done sketch work as well. And there are so many. I love comedy. And there are so many times I'm like, I would have loved to have been in the writer's room when they came up with this joke or that joke. Like, I love listening to some of the late night comedians, the writers, when they interview the writers. I mean, what happens in those rooms is hilarious. And one of the books, Steph, one of the books you recommended to me, what I was doing while you were breeding. Yeah. The woman who wrote that was, (laughs) she was a comedy writer too. And she would talk about the things that would happen in a room full of men sitting around a table writing these jokes. And it was it was such good insight into that. So it's kind of cool that you come from that world. And, and honestly, the service industry has a built-in comedy, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding? <laughs> I know, right? It's how you get through your night is laugh, laugh through it. That's how I get through life right now, chaps. <laughs> That's honestly. how we're all doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're all doing Thank it. Thank God for comedy, you know? Yes. Comedy and bourbon, but let's get back to what you do, because you actually, you're right in the middle of three different publications. This one, Psalm Journal, and uh, Tasting Panel, which is on my coffee table, Clever Root, and that's a recent one. It is. That was a recent edition. So let our listeners know what they can get out of each one and what the most outstanding feature of each publication really is. Okay, so the Clever Root, yes, as you say, is is the newest. It's 
uh, gosh, a year over, a little over a year now. Uh, <coughs> our consumer facing. Sorry, there's Coyote. Coyote, come here. Come Coyote here. likes the clever roots. Yes, she's super into uh, food and, and cannabis. <laughs> Coyote, come here. Um, she has something to say. I think she does. <laughs> we listen she's, harder. <laughs> she's protective. The clever root. So it's our only consumer facing magazine, but you, you can get it at Barnes and Noble and and Whole Foods. And in it, we talk about cannabis. Of course, that's sort of a mature approach to cannabis. Anything grown from the ground, and then of course there's the the chef focus as well. So it's kind of like a foodie kind of stoner mag, but very sophisticated, if that makes sense. <laughs> and was it Clever Ruth that actually coined the term ganjier? Who when they talk about terroir, is that or or the, the sommeliers, but they did address cannabis terroir as well. But ganjier, is that a thing or was that a pop culture thing? You know, I think it's maybe a pop culture thing, but I will be super interested to see what name sticks. I've heard um Bud Tender. <laughs> uh, as you say, Ganjier, Canisseur. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, there there are a few names, but it'll be once the community evolves, it'll be interesting to see actually what what the expert is called. And I think there's a lot more to that world than most people realize. There's a whole industry around it. And now it's legal in Colorado. Yeah. And actually, there's a, a great scene where you are a pretty big scene. As I understand, I've yes. not been yet. But there's a there's a school, I forget the name of the school there, but you can become an, an, an interpretist, interpenist, something like that, where you're oh. interpreting terpenes. What? Uh, yeah. Name of the school. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. That but sounds yeah, like a loco fun. episode stuff. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. The other two are trade publications. Oh, yeah. Much. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sure yes. Trade, yes. Uh, the Tasting Panel uh, is the largest circulated trade magazine in the U.S. We've got a huge, huge thing. It goes to every restaurant, every wine buyer, every beverage buyer, that kind of thing. Uh, same with the Somme Journal, but the Tasting Panel is more spirits, um, you know, kind of lighter cocktail recipes, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. And then, of course, the Somme Journal is my sort of uh, what I, I take the most pride in, of course, I try and, you know, use my background as a sommelier and, and just really go from there and take the educational route, you know, as far as what would I want to know if I'm a psalm and I'm sitting in a restaurant and I've got a few minutes and I, you know, what, what's the latest region that we can talk about, that sort of thing. So I am not the publisher, you know, and, and, and so I kind of carry out my orders, but fortunately, I've got a a good lady up at the top, Meredith May, and she's kind of running the show. And she actually, she's great. If we're, we sort of touched on it earlier, but she hires all mostly women. I think we have uh, one one other man working here, and that's her husband. Oh, nice. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. Good. So it's yeah, it's an office full of ladies, and kind of proud of that fact lately. And Steph, you've met Meredith, right? Yeah, at the uh, Women of the Vine and Spirit Symposium. Ah. Right. And then she was at the Society of Wine Educators Conference last year in Portland doing Game of Wines. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. So she is super cool. So you're lucky to have such a cool environment. And oh, I get to bring my dogs to work day. So that's cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like uh, every actually everyone here gets to bring their dogs. So there's probably at once like 10, 10 dogs running around. That's awesome. Wow. Wow. That is cool. And just for the industry people who are listening, they can subscribe and get the publication Perfect. at their place of work or yeah. at their house or right yes absolutely if you if you work in a restaurant um at, at any position please email us and and we'll make sure that you guys get a get a copy there yes thank you for mentioning that yeah. That's what I appreciate. Good. Good. well and is there anything coming up as far as events or projects or things that we should be aware of or marking our calendars circling dates yeah, gosh, well, we're going to be at the we're going to be at SOMCON in San Diego in November. Um, and there's going to be some panels there. I think digging into terroir is one of our our more popular panels that we do. And, you know, we explore regions through tasting the wines, that sort of thing. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then in our in our current issue, I think I'm sort of I got to go to the Stag Sleep District. I don't know if you ladies have ever been to that particular region of Napa oh. Valley. And we did a one of my favorite thing that that the Psalm Journal does is we do Psalm camps. So we'll go to a particular region and just explore that region with 10, you know, 10 wine buyers slash sommeliers from all over the country and really get to know a region. And that this particular Psalm camp was fascinating. It was incredible and fun and endearing and all of it. And, and the wines are so amazing. So, so amazing. I was, I, I really am 
I've, I drank the Kool-Aid. I drank the Saks Lake District Kool-Aid. There, actually <laughs> yeah, that's in the latest publication of the Song yes. Journal. Yeah. Yes. And it, and it is. And these camps sort of, you know, and the, the um, sort of um, reviews of these camps are kind of a good way to get to know an area if you've not been. And then that way you can kind of get a lay of the land, know the producers, that kind of thing. And how often do you do the camps? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I would estimate we do probably 10 a year, something like that. Oh, that often. So yeah. and people apply to go? Well, we, yes, that one. We invite sommeliers. So, but you can certainly, if you're a sommelier, you can certainly reach out to us and let us know you're interested. But yeah, we, we like to cherry pick. Spread songs. the love around. And- yeah, yeah. We have a lot going on. You totally uh, do. <laughs> and listeners, I mean, we're back in July, and I think we released it in August. We talked about the crew artists in college, which is where I met you. Yes. And that is just now getting in here. Yes. So you guys do have a lot going on. And you went from there, I think, back to California. Then you went to like New Orleans. And then you were, you were just, are you ever home? Oh, God. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I get to watch TV. <laughs> with your dog yes sometimes. That, it's it's so nice when that happens isn't it it is yeah you guys do have a lot going on and you do a lot of tasting and swirling and sipping for the magazine so when you are finally sitting at home with your puppies and your wife and your son and his monster truck rallies and all these fun things you guys do what are you drinking <laughs> What are you pouring Uh, yourself personally? Lately, it's been, um, I actually, on Monday, I just took my uh, Cicerone certification exam. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the past, the past year preceding, I had been um, just studying my, my butt off and drinking beer and beer and beer. And interestingly enough, when I was, you know, studying beer, I'd, I'd want to drink wine. And it was the same when I was studying for my saunter. You know, you only, I only want to drink beer. But right. just last night I had um, a dark and stormy, a, two, a 2018 Firestone dark and stormy, which was a barrel aged, wasn't a sour. I think it was a brown ale aged in a rum barrel. Uh, with a little bit of ginger and lime. And it was way too soon to drink it. It was like 11% alcohol, but it was a fascinating beer. And in a year, it's going to be even better. But yeah, so I'm I'm drinking a lot of beer lately. Yeah. Well, how did the Cicerone exam go? How do you feel? Uh, well, I I kind of don't want to... Don't want to speculate. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I, I will say this. We tasted, I think, 15 beers. And, the you know, you you have three hours of writing. So basically, your, ex- your written portion is three hours long. You've got 150 short answer questions and then three essays. And then after you finish that, you've got about two hours. You spend an hour doing the service portion and then an hour on the tasting. And the tasting is about as I said, 15 beers and you've got, you've got in front of you and you've got to identify beer styles and then also off flavor compounds. Wow. Um, wow. And you have to say, that sounds you know, really yeah. difficult. I it's, mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's I found crazy. it just as difficult, if not Hard. more difficult than the Psalm certification. Yeah. Um, sounds like it, but I will say you, cause you find out how you did after, you know, you go with your, the exam proctor, you go over your beers afterwards and, you know, she asks everyone what you thought this was and what you thought that was and whether or not you would send it back and, you know, why you would send it back and what you could do to the draft system if there was an issue. And uh, anyway, and I know that I missed two out of 15. So that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Nice. Yeah. I will never whine about the unit three of the WSET diploma exam again after hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, oh, 12 wines and three hours to write out five essay questions. And then you're going to, and then all that. And I was like, oh, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. And then you're telling us this. And I'm like, holy crap. You had to know a lot of technical things, a lot of science, a lot of, then you've got service and then flavor compounds, sensory analysis, and be able to write. Yeah, my hand was numb. I haven't actually handwritten that much. I mean, you know, you've you've gone through the WSET program, the handwriting, man. Yeah, the hands like it's cramped really and, and sore. And I remember saying, yeah. I physically can't do this again. You got to time your bathroom breaks. No, can't, can't do it again. Wow. And yeah. now the Cicerone, though, is that that is the highest level of any kind of beer certification, right? Yes. Well, it's quite similar to the Court of Master Sommeliers. So there, there are four levels. Um, they they, oh, they used to only have levels. three. Yeah, they used to only have three, but now they've added a fourth, I think, as of a year ago, maybe two. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so yeah, there are four, you know, it's an intro. I think they call it a certified beer server is the, yes. is the level one. And then, uh, and then a uh, Cicerone level two and then advanced and then master. Okay. So you took the master. Yeah. No, no, I oh. took the, the, I took the, uh, level, level two. two. That's yeah. only level certified two. Cic- yes. Oh my word. Yeah. Oh, my word is right. Wow. I thought yeah. you said I thought you said the sister round. I was thinking level two. And then I was like, wait a minute. All that science. That's crazy. That's thank you for sharing that. I don't think we've had anyone really talk about that on the show yet. Stuff. Oh, no. Well, no, I'm happy that's to. very I'm interesting, happy I think. Beer, yeah, we should. We should come back. We should do a beer episode, you know, when you can uh, t- spend a little more time with us. But we know your time is yeah. precious. So, Steph? I think it's that time when we ask for the uh, deliver us the embarrassing or funny wine story, you know, because then we all know that, you know, you're real, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and no pressure with the comedy aspect either. None. Yeah, yeah. seriously, no pressure, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I've been thinking about it and I can't think of like any super embarrassing. I mean, I've gotten like, a, you know, someone's asked me what the variety was in this particular wine and I've made it up and then had to go back to the table and apologize and <laughs> tell them, you know, because that's the thing. You can't you can't ever bullshit. Uh, bull, you, you know, can, you can say bullshit. It's fine. Bullshit. OK, <laughs> yeah. I actually I'll say one sort of satisfying kind of kind of funny thing. Um, it was when I was at Spago. And I was working the floor and, you know, as a sommelier there, you're kind of also a manager. And anyway, and I was walking around and just kind of, you know, making sure everyone was happy on the floor. And this guy comes up to me and he's got his cell phone and he comes up to me and he's really pissed and he's flustered. And he goes, I, I, I don't get any service on this in this restaurant. I don't get any cell phone service. <laughs> and I go, uh, I apologize, sir. C- can you tell me who the service provider is? And he's like, oh, that at t And I go, why don't you call them? And I walked <laughs> <laughs> And it just felt so good, you know, to say that. Yeah, I know, really. It's the restaurant's right. fault. We've yeah. painted the walls with lead. Seriously. So you can't use your cell phones in here. No, that's, that's <laughs> hilarious. And you had some pretty good stories from working in the Hollywood restaurant scene, too, don't you? Oh, my you? God. Oh, I have so many. Can so you share many. one real quick? Like, Probably one of my favorite, I was uh, working as a server som at uh, Mastro's in Beverly Hills, and they have a third level there on the top called the penthouse. And a lot of times these these big producers or whoever will rent out the entire top floor of the penthouse. This particular night, it was a big music producer's birthday. And so Beyonce and Jay-Z and a ton of other people were there. Of course, we were pouring Jay-Z's Ace of Spades champagne. And... Um, I was like, you know, I mean, I looked like just the dorkiest white girl and (laughs) I had to replenish everyone's champagne and they were all kind of on the dance floor area. And I was like walking around holding the bottle, presenting the champagne and they were all kind of in a circle and they were like, hey, come on. You know, they waved me over like as they were dancing. And then so I felt as if I had to do a little dancing as I walked over and I kind of like basically did like the middle you know how you like go into the middle of the circle and (laughs) kind of dance I kind of like did that as I was pouring everyone champagne and they were like encouraging me probably for you know their own amusement but still that is funny I was wondering if you were gonna have to bust a move with Beyonce listeners you heard it here first this is our first busting a move with Beyonce story on the wine five podcast yeah like booty (laughs) booty bumps like booty delicious (laughs) <laughs> it was kind of a, it was very unnerving to dance in front of those two and have them tell, you know, have them wave you over and invite you into their dance. Yeah, circle. you need to do like a couple of tequila shots before you go and do that. Yeah, yeah, man, I quickly danced out. Now, can you bust a move or was it more like Ellen on um, Seinfeld? Oh, God, it's way worse. <laughs> it was That's way a great worse. Story. Well, oh, my funny. God, that is the best. I love it. Our first Beyonce and a Bootylicious story here on the Wine to Five podcast. But is there anything <laughs> else, Jabs, that you want to share with our listeners? Anything at all that you think our listeners should know? No, I, I do want to thank you both because you're both wonderful. And I love uh, ladies and I love wine. And um, all, those two things, when they come together, I think are, are magical. Um, so thank you for having me. 
I think so too. And I think, you know, you have you that know. warmth. Like when I first met you and you're like, Jabs, I know you. I read your little reviews. And, I, and it's like, we do feel like we know you because you're in our mailbox every couple of months. So it's really Aww. cool to have been able to meet you and have you on the show. How can listeners, if they want to follow you on the Instagram or anywhere else, how can listeners connect with you online or if they want to subscribe to your magazines or anything else? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, my gosh, my Instagram name is a doozy because it's my name, but it's Jesse Birchbox. So it's J-E-S-S-I-E. And then I think I even put an underscore in there. Terrible. Uh, and then Birchbach, B-I-R-S-C-H-B-A-C-H uh, on Instagram. And then you can just, you know, Google Psalm Journal and okay. and pull up all that stuff. Yeah, you're easy to you're easy to stalk online. And okay. so that's good. And we'll, we'll link up your Instagram if that's okay, because you do post some cute Please. things. Yeah, I try to keep it light and fun. We like to stalk our guests. So thank you so much for Happy sharing that with us. <laughs> uh, you got any big, big weekend plans this coming weekend? I'm supposed to go to a Packer game, actually. The Packers are going to be uh, in Los Angeles playing the Rams. And I'm a big oh, nice. Packer fan. So there you go. Awesome. Gold pack. Yeah, yeah. Any Halloween plans? Uh, my son is making us, um, he wants us all to be sharks. Uh, and my wife is an excellent seamstress. So she's making us all shark costumes. Wow. Uh, yeah. But I wanted to kind of put a spin on mine. At first I was going to be um, Mr. Wonderful from the Shark Tank. And then she was like, no, we have, you know, he wants us to be sharks. Oh so <laughs> I'm going to do, um, I'm, I'm going to be a pool shark at least. So I'm going to wear my it. shark costume, but I'm going to, you know, have a mustache and carry a pool cue and wear one of those sort of green visors. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that stuff. Sorry, we had to keep asking questions. I think you're a fascinating no. person and we'd no, love to I, be nosy. Love <laughs> yes, please. Please invite me back because you are wonderful. We will. Yes, let's talk beer next time. That would be awesome. For sure, bro. Because you got to sit <laughs> do the beer. <laughs> Definitely. We're, we'll do a beer episode in 2019. I think that would be great. So we'll have time to set that up. Maybe we can all drink some beer on the show and you can kind of talk us through it. I'd love that. Now we're talking. Now we're yeah. talking. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and you have a great thank rest you. of your day. Thank you, ladies. You as well. Thanks, Jabs. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I am so glad to have Jabs on the show. And I'm so glad, Val, that you asked her about the celebrity story because that was so funny when she told us about Beyonce. I loved that story. I love that we have a Beyonce and busting a move story on the Wine to Five podcast. I think that's, we are now two degrees from Beyonce. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. As soon as Beyonce has a wine of her own, she's going to come talk about it. <laughs> Uh, that's right that's good that's, that's right. good what other shout outs do we have well of course we have our big shout out to jabs as you said and to the psalm journal which graces our coffee tables yes it does but uh, you know what we have to shout out to i just saw it last week after we got done recording i was just doing kind of our our rounds and i found on itunes or apple Podcasts or whatever the hell they're calling it now it was a hashtag w25 challenge reference in the form of a five-star iTunes review. It's kind of like a hybrid. Yeah. And this is, I know, and this is from JKV1229, and it was titled, Try the New Wine. Hashtag W25 Challenge, which I love, because that's what we're all about. It says, I love your show and purchased a weekly tasting after hearing you mention it. I opened my palate up to a brand new French white pick pool, and I loved it. Thank you. So I saw that stuff. And then, of course, I was like, guess what? I like, was t sending this to you. And I was getting all snivelly because this is why we love doing this. There's so much wine out there to try, so little time. And somebody's life has just been made a little bit better by discovering something cool in their glass or even something they don't want to order next time. You never know. Right. Even then, this gives us a reason for you and me to be kind of yapping behind the mics each week other than we love to do it but uh, cheers to everybody who's discovered something new or even discovered something they don't want any part of anymore just because they were listening to our show and that was kind of a shout out to our sponsor too don't you think i think it was yeah we gave a shout out to the jvk 1229 and they were given a shout out to weekly tasting yeah that's how we all learn, not just when you and I are learning from our guests or learning from our research and the time we put into building the show and making it interesting, 
but we are grateful to hear that the listeners are learning too. So we love that. I remember when we first introduced uh, Weekly Tasting and Wines to Sold Out, it was because we don't introduce anything on the show that we personally wouldn't take advantage of. So, so we like that because there's a whole world of wine to explore and Weekly Tasting gets it organized for you, as that review just said. So whether it's Treasures of France, uh, Classic Pinot Noirs, Italian Bubbly, one of my favorites, or this new one, it's a Nebbiolo Barolo comparison yeah package. yeah yeah that which is cool because what's well, such a barolo is nebbiolo right. so but they're talking like lange nebbiolo versus barolo that's a smart way to learn wine it really is yeah you can check this all out at weeklytasting.com forward slash w25 you can sign up you can get started there or if it's easier just go to our website and we have the links there for you on the right hand side Yeah, one thing I did discover, it's on the right-hand side if you're on a computer, but if you're on a mobile phone, you got to scroll to the bottom to get to those grapes. And when you see that WTSO wine stain grapes, then you click on it. I was looking on my phone this weekend for something else, and I found, I'm like, what's it doing down there? (laughs) It's the way the mobile app works. There's nothing I can do about that. Should we go on to Patreon Love? Because that's something Uh, we can... uh, Thanks. Oh, I think so. Yes, uh, we have a big shout out and thank yous to our patrons who support our show. Robin from Girls Gone Grape. She is our Reserva Superiore supporter. And Auntie in Georgia is our Reserva supporter. And our tenacious tasters, Jeff E. from the We Like Drinking podcast. And speaking of their podcast, I do have to say that the other Jeff, Jeff Solomon, inspired my Halloween costume that I am dressing up. As of this recording, I am going to be dressed up as the rock legend Axel Rose. (laughs) That's funny. I thought you were going to tell me you were going to dress up as a biology teacher. Oh, okay. that's so... No, that would be really funny, too. But... uh, With a big, like, no sugar. Right. Button. Yeah, right. It's like go and just have rants that I'm going to say during the Halloween party and be Jeff Solomon. Uh, that would be good. No, but so Axel Rose was his idea. And uh, that's funny. So, yeah, I did my research on Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses and then have converted it into a pink costume. <laughs> Oh, my God, you would totally have to post pictures yes. of that. Yes, yes. Damn it, Jeff Solomon. <laughs> You did this. And this is why you should really listen to the very end of our show, people. But anyway, back to our tenacious tasters, because we love all of them. Sebastian of Sassy Italy Tours. Thank you so much. And Jen in Maryland, David and Lisa in Illinois, Anne-Marie in Virginia, Lynn of Savor the Harvest blog, and Sharon in Florida. And our It's Not 5 O'Clock and We Don't Care listeners, Meg in South Dakota, Clay in Arizona... John, Andrew, Aswani, and Kristen in California, Chantel in Ontario, Canada, Mary Lou in Pennsylvania, Kathy in Georgia, Chris, Janet, and Diane in Colorado, Steve and Renee in Illinois, Kathy in Tennessee, Sean in Ohio, and Ashley and Sarah in North Carolina. And our Tastemaker listeners, David in Scotland, Carol in Kentucky, Karen in California, Chip and Katie in Pennsylvania, Serena in New York, Annie in Colorado, and Danielle. And you can go to wine2five.com, click on support, and you can show your support or find out more details. Also, between our weekly episodes, you can find goodies on our website, wine2five.com, or find us in the social spaces at wine 25 So until next week, everybody, cheers. cheers. Thank you for listening to the Wine to 5 podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash Wine T-W-O 5. And tune in next week for more fun and useful sip tips.